here we go again something new to the channel as well three guys both you, you, you're probably familiar with that by now i do individual reviews with both of these guys and i thought why not let's let's bring them all together and let's review some beers so we're going to be taking a look at the Vosteiner pilsner a bit of a classic really yeah um in, in my in my book an underrated beer as well on the supermarket shelves well, it's just, just come into Tesco's, believe it or not. So this is part of the, the new range of beers that Tesco's are having on their shelves, which probably getting not looked at because it's in a different section. Really? Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, uh, we're going to be we're, we're going to be cracking that one open first, just just to wet the whistle, and then moving on to this beauty, Brewdog Funk Punk. Yeah. Don't say it too quickly. <laughs> wait, wait, no. <laughs> Why not? Well, <laughs> we can't. We are actually counting on you because it is a hybrid, you know, the, with the Belgian Belgian East. So you are expert. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that with the Belgian yeast in there. It's uh, yeah, gonna be interesting. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, right. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll open this for Steiner up then, shall we? Yeah. 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 We warm didn't try it. This is a warm thick, didn't we? But yeah, we, we were going to go for the keg job, but to no avail. A beer that oh, I've had a nice time with time before. before, and I'm, I'm sure you guys have had a lot of these, these beers before. Um, it's it's a, wow. it's a decent solid pilsner in my book, I think. Yeah, and believe it or not, in, if you go to Germany, it's it's not a a beer that you you find overly in the bar believe it or not um the warsteiner um now the, the town of warstein is actually right smack in the middle if anyone knows anything about the dam busters and the dams the town of war warstein is actually like sort of smack in the middle between all the all the dams on the dam busters raid so uh lucky enough i never hit the brewery eh? <laughs> it is yes it is <laughs> yes because it's been going since 1753, so yeah, if a few of them uh, bouncing bombs had gone off target, we could uh, not be drinking this no. now. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, so what have we got in the glass then, chaps? Well, very nice pale straw, golden, uh, almost yeah. beer, you know, clear, a nice head, small medium bubbles on the bottom, some big ones on top, but it's very nice form, very nice. Uh, con yeah, beer. massive foam on mine. Yeah. Form, yeah more in mind and uh, nice nice very small uh bubbles uh going up right it's very nice yeah yeah we, we've, we've let the side down christoph because i see i see uh mark mark's got matching glassware attire there yes of course yes of course <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i do love these um the polka glasses over yeah. the, the the polka style pilsner glasses it's fantastic um Sometimes you go in a bar and they're taller than this, believe it or not. And it's, this is a point four um, of a litre. Oh. But sometimes that they're really, really slim and longer. So you can end up with like a like a um, point three of a litre of beer and end up with a glass that's like close to a foot tall. You know, three hundred centimetres, oh. you know, thirty centimetres tall. It's yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I must admit, it's a nice glass. So. Yeah looking good looking good let's get a it nose looks like a, it looks like a pilsner oh it yeah smells like a pilsner yeah very very nice uh sass aroma yeah yeah definitely a little, little bit of white pepper i always get from that sauce. yeah yeah you've got, they've got the peppery the peppery uh notes there you've also got um sort of grungy piney yeah nice maltiness as well yeah 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 it's it's a solid beer let's yeah. go in on it eh? Prost, they say Prost. yeah this is very nice full-bodied pilsner oh yeah simple but very effective uh, yes yes yeah. indeed indeed it's only four you, but, you know it, it it works perfectly yeah and, and it's it's that it's that sort of you know that pilsner strength as well that 4.85 percent which you know a lot of pilsners if you go into into germany are sort of 
between sort of 4.6 and 5.4 percent and that's the sort of range you're going to find them um so it sits nicely in that range of abb and on, and on target within that range yeah it's yeah. crisp it's dry and it's refreshing which are the three traits of really what you want with a pilsner yeah you have a nice uh, little um soury lemony note on, on the end and yeah, sort of nice, lemon pepper yeah and nice bitterness it's not very mm. strong uh but it's nicely nicely um uh shown uh herbal very typical uh pilsner type so german hops maybe sass uh so yeah it's very very nice but it's still gentle still gentle it's not over the top yeah no no you're right and, and, and even though it's dry and bitter it's refreshing so anyone who has preconceptions that it's dry it's bitter it's it's not going to be thirst quenching that sort of thing because, well it's totally the opposite yeah because it's a full-bodied beer you have this nice balance uh you have a um, contrast between a uh, nice maltiness some sweetness there and hops bitterness on the end which actually uh complement each other mm. so it's nicely nicely balanced oh yeah very well balanced beer mm. well and well executed uh pilsner and i wouldn't expect anything different really coming from coming from germany we were just saying before we went live you know you, and you might be able to answer this question mark because you go to germany quite a lot in the supermarket what we're looking at for a, a bottle of this then in in the 660 mm in 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 a, a german supermarket you're probably looking i would be surprised if it's about one euro fifty okay yeah so you know and over here what is it i think tesco's are doing three bottles of this but you think they're half liter bottles at five pound 25 it's a bargain you know what i mean you think as close to three pints of beer you know and what's it gonna what's it gonna cost you for three pints down your local yeah you won't get much change from a fiver, would you? Well, oh, but for, for three pints nowadays, you're probably looking at you're not going to get change out of a tenner. Mm. Yeah. My local was actually going to take this beer on, on tap. Okay. And I was rubbing the hands together, going, yeah, I'll have some of that. They worked out that it was going to have to be £5.56 quid a pint, and they reckon no one would buy it apart from me. <laughs> yeah, you... It, that 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 would put that put a lot of people off on it for that that sort of price for a pint in a boozer yeah you, yeah you, you do you do appreciate that they've got to put a mark up on it like but when you see the prices you're you always have that that in your head don't you when you see a yeah. the price of it in a supermarket you know it does put a, uh, the thing is with it right if to me it's this is not a this is not a five and a half six quid a pint beer i'm sorry to say it it's not um to me four quid four quid all day long I'd, I'd pay four quid for a pint of this in a pub maybe 450 a push but that's about it you know it's you know you've got to look at you know your peronis and stuff like that this is far better than peroni mm -hmm. but it's peroni money peroni is like a premium beer in a pub isn't it and as far as i'm concerned this should be peroni prices if not a little bit less than, than peroni um better beer than pr probably yes. you know yeah yeah but you know what i think i think they they coming from um thinking oh it's it's uh, imported beer it have to be priced more even if you see like polish beers in supermarkets you know what they are hugely overpriced yeah uh you know you have uh, five pounds for uh four pack you know of this care and uh, it's not worth Really, it's not worth. I, I'm not buying this, uh, even if I would like to sometimes drink a Polish beer. But no, uh, it's far too much. Especially then in Poland, it would cost like uh, fifty pence or something. <laughs> yeah, now, it, this 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 beer is, is as on level par, in my opinion, in, in sort of German pilsners as um, your Veltins and your Conic. Yeah. Which, is conic a bit burger and veltins is a uh, there's still actually a little family-run business 
like war steineries, believe it or not. They're still, I think it's still a family business that's been passed down through the ages. Um, yeah, you know, I think I think there's a very strong uh, side of the German brew, uh, brewing uh, because because there's lots of small independent breweries and yes. they compete each other and they have to have very good quality beers even if they are simple they have to be in quality it's actually war war i've just i've just actually just quickly just looked it up actually um they're actually um in the ninth generation of the kramer family that wow. runs the brewery so fair play to that's you know that's, that's that's quite something isn't it and uh and they've got a big operation there you know um and that's good you know i like to see it is is you know they're still they're still holding their own out there you know it's it, it is in a market where i don't know if, if the thing is when you go to germany if you've ever been to germany it's the beers are so regional you know people say to me um like becks I've never seen Bex in a bar I've ever been in in Germany. Never ever seen it. And yet it's a big selling German beer. Apparently. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bitburger, if you go over sort of as you first enter into sort of Germany, you see a lot of Bitburger. But as you go more and more into Germany, you sort of get to sort of where Cologne is and Bitburger stops. And you go yeah. on from there. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, in Köln or. or um... Then, then you have only, only uh, Kölsch beers. Yes, I know. You're one of my favourite styles yeah. of beer. Uh, and if you would go to the uh, Dortmund, you, you have Dortmund. Yes, of course. The uh, oh, Dortmund, yeah. Altbier, Altbier, yeah. Altbier, and they 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 fight each other. Oh no, oh, no. Yeah. They, they will not drink any any other beer. No. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm off, I'm off to Cologne in a uh, um. May bank holiday. I'll be in Cologne for a couple of days. My on, the, on the last, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I actually stay at a, a brewery in a hotel called the. Yeah, uh, the, the. I've got a bottle up here. I'll have to. I'll tell you what you have to do. Give me your addresses, guys, and I'll and I'll send you a bottle of this. That's my favourite Kolsch in Cologne. Oh, wow! And they have a um. The brewery is a hotel. And I stay, I stay at the brewery in the in the hotel, a fantastic hotel, right in the centre of, of Cologne. Um, you, haven't got four, you haven't got far to get get into your bed, then, have you? When you've got, like, <laughs> you bet you've got a beer tap in your room, and if oh, you, bloody but, hell. But, yeah, but the trouble is, it's when you're in Cologne. Why are you going to stay in your room all day long and drink beer? Yeah, <laughs> you just go down in the lift, and and you've got you've got the honor stool, the bar down there, or like we do, we just go out. Around the various bars in Cologne and try and drink as much different cultures as possible because there's so many and they all have their unique flavour. Um, they all have to be 4.8% ABV. Um, that is under the Kolsch um, convention. Um, yeah. So they have to change it by flavour and by dryness. And and it's when you look at a Kolsch, everyone thinks it's like a lager style beer. It's not, it's top fermented. It's brewed like yeah. a bit. But, but still, it's laggard. Yes, yes, and it has the gas like a pills now. It's yeah, yeah, and it have to, and it have to be brewed in in uh, in Köln. Mm. Everything what's what's outside, uh, it can be called Kölsch. Yes, exactly. Mm. And there's still parts of some of the some of the Kölsches are brewed on um, the other side of the river in Köln, and they're not looked on as in the same regards as the ones that are. Brewed on the the right side. I think the right right the left. Only nine nine uh, breweries that they can use the name. There's actually, um, I think there's about nineteen different breweries, Kolsch breweries, and um, I think I've only had about half of them. Some of them are very small, but yeah, um, it's good. It's a good city to, to no. go and drink beer. Yeah. Yeah. Now that is that is proper beer politics that is there, isn't it? Oh that? yes, yes. You know what? Because <laughs> because uh, they actually were, were fighting against them um, uh, 
lager le- revolution. So they, yes. so they was they were saying, you know what, we will keep our old beer, right? How it is, we don't want to change. Uh, so they, they why that's why they they you know uh, uh, get together. Said no, no, we don't want any other beer in the town. We will be doing what we're doing. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's still ale, <laughs> but lager. Yeah. And it's very mild, very, very, very soft. Uh, really, even even softer than lager. Yeah, you can drink lots of it. The guns with it as well. Yeah. yeah, and actually, alt beer is it's a little bit opposite the. Um, it's the same AB, yeah, four point eight alt beer. But then in alt beer, they have they do doppel backs and um, yeah, buttons, don't they like that? But but alt beer is four point eight percent like a Kolsch. Yeah. Um, in direct competition yeah <laughs> you know what we drinking we are drinking Warsteiner, but we're talking about curls <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> well, okay. it's, it's, it's nice to wander gen- now and again so it's, it's all beer related so it doesn't matter the industry it's it's very very nice very um specific to to regions and yes there's lots of history there so it's lots of lots of um topics to talk about yeah, and that's what it's sort of, it's sort of just sort of obviously we diverted to Kulsh, but that's obviously just sort of describing to the people that may be watching that have not perhaps gone to visited Germany before, and they look at Germany from the outside. So they sort of see, you know, your Becks on your supermarket shelves, your War Steiner, and you know they think that maybe if they go to Germany, they'll be able to get that across Germany. No, you won't. It is yeah. each part of Germany has its own styles and. Even sometimes towns, you know, you could yeah. be in one town, like, um, and drink certain styles of beer, and go to the next town, and you think, oh, I quite like that beer that I had last night. And it ain't sold in that town because it's a totally different style of beer whatsoever. So it's yeah, you know, the general public thinks that you know German beer, it's it's Bavaria and Oktoberfest, nothing else. Yes, in a Stein, I think it's all in yeah. a Stein. Yeah. All in a Stein, yeah. yeah. And the funny thing is, if you go in a bar. Um, people don't drink out of steins. No. They drink. Oh, no. they, want, they, they want fresh beer. If yeah. in, in a lot of cases they drink out of point three of a liter, you might see the odd ones drink point five of a liter. Yeah. But so, most of the time, it's yeah. It, it's interesting because in curl, if you if you drink curls, you will only get two hundred mils uh, yes. uh, Stange uh, glass. Yes. Yes. And they um, will, they will all, all, always say, you know what? I want a fresh beer, so I want a small one. There we go. That's yeah. for people not seeing the little glass that you have coaching. Yeah. Wow. So they, so they don't use big glasses because no. you, you would have a, a warm beer. They they don't like it. So so guys, maybe you can ask this question, uh, answer this question for for me. Um, so this this old Stein thing then is this does this ride off the back of like Oktoberfest then and festivals? Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. The, the Stein is because Oktoberfest is so busy, it's getting served beer. So you have a Stein with your beer in, so you've got you have lots of beer, and otherwise, like they couldn't cope with it. Basically, it's yeah. It's, yeah, you know what? This this is a question because uh, on the Oktoberfest the um, queues so are so huge that you're not going to to buy one beer because it's no. pointless you would uh, wait for another two hours to get another one so you know you're just uh, ordering few and they are huge so uh, yeah. that's why. well it makes sense doesn't it? it makes sense there's only one there's only one bar i've ever been in germany where i've drunk steins and and that is in the Hofbrau House, which is the famous, you know, the Munich beer hall. And that's that again is they have to serve steins because it's so rammed in there of an evening, you can't get served, you know. Yeah. So if you do get served, you, you've got a liter of beer. Um, mm. Other than that, anywhere else you go in Munich, you know, you go to Lohenbrau, Eyinger, um or my favourite place in Munich, if you ever go there, is the Beer and Oktoberfest Museum. The bar there of an evening where you meet locals and they will talk to you about the history of beer 
yeah it's, it's a place that i do want to visit i'm not sure what destination i'll end up but i definitely want to make my way somewhere in germany i, I th i'm thinking bamberg that's that that is in my head because I do I'm, off there, I'm off there in July to Bamberg. Um, oh, you have to let me know how you get on, mate. I'm actually the hotel I'm staying in is opposite the Schlenker Brewery, which does the, the famous for the, the oh, smoked yeah. beer. Yes. Yeah. Um, because I always like a hotel in the centre of the town with parking, you know, because I drive over there. So um <laughs> yeah. Hence the, the Moolah um hotel in Cologne. They have a an underground car park just up with walking distance so you 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 have yeah, parking you see and get parking <laughs> in cologne is very hard believe it or not cool stuff well it, it is a very hard to um uh, use the car in the german uh, german towns because um they have restrictions your car have to uh, pass a certain uh, you know uh, uh limits solution <laughs> Do I've actually got a, um, a German tax disc in my motor, yeah. the environmental badge, which, believe it or not, it cost me less than 30 euros, right, for life. Yeah. Or it's on your number plate, basically. So, um, yeah, the only time you have to change it is if you change your car, but I've got, I've got a private plate, so I'll never have to change it. You know, I'll just swap it for vehicle vehicle. Um, yeah, so and that's, that's under 30 euros delivered to your door and that means i can drive in any german town or city oh cool and, and, and you don't you don't get penalized then because you've got that no no no, no. Cool. um i can't pronounce what it's called in german but uh, believe it or not I, where i got it from it came from the czech republic <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah a company in the czech republic's got a uh, got the the um obviously the license or the or the machine to print these badges up there's one in berlin and the other the other place is the czech republic well all just of course isn't it it's like it's like it's like the uk passports isn't it being made in france so it, yeah, yeah i'll just have to bring that up actually these <laughs> uh, uh, passports being made in france it's yeah we don't make we don't make nothing here anymore yeah. apart from beer yeah, and, and, yeah some of that's a bit ropey <laughs> yeah yeah the old tesco range is a bit hit and miss isn't it i mean it yeah I've, I've had a i've had a i've had a couple of bad experiences so far um i'd probably say a little bit more positive than negative for me so far but yeah the, the, i think it's just getting some of these breweries, the, the amount of volumes that they've got to push out now, I think they're having a job to get the balance right on it. Well, well, I looked at I'd Lumens earlier, and yeah, it's a good beer. Well, it's not a great beer. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a New England IPA. It's uh, just middle of the road. It's which which one's that, Nate? Magic Rock Lumens. Yeah. Yes, I, I I I really enjoyed that, but I had that after having that dance juice and. Yeah. anything would be better than anything that the dance juice would have been do you know what on some of the forums there's people loving that dance juice and i can't understand it it's absolutely yeah. shocking yeah i didn't i didn't get on with it at all um no. so I watched, I watched simon's review of it i watched your review of it when you when you when you bought it out and i watched simon's review he did it a couple of days ago and he didn't really he wasn't really a fan of it as well it smells nice doesn't it? it smells so nice doesn't it? you get this the aroma oh, yeah, you take the yeah. first sip and you think oh this is quite nice then take the second sip the third sip and it starts going downhill from there doesn't it it's mm. yeah it's a weird beer it's yeah I'd... yeah yeah but i mean I've, I've had some belters in there i've had some belters so i can't really can't really argue for three quid can you but the thing is with tesco's what you got to look at is going to their lager section because like you say war stein has appeared on the shelves which no one knows about that war stein has appeared in the test in this tesco revolution of craft beers and the other one is your kima pilsner by vocation you can only buy it in a six pack the oh yeah 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 okay oh, we, we, had, we had the dirty one didn't we we did the dirty pilsner yeah yeah but your kima pilsner has arrived on tesco shelves but it's not singular it's only in six packs six pack is seven quid but yeah i was drinking that last night uh a few 
glasses like and uh, it was you, uh, like a single ones but it was much earlier uh yeah i think i, I think i've got it uh, before from tesco and Warstein uh, in my tesco was for a long time <laughs> yeah my one it's just appeared on the shelf yeah, yeah. Like uh like recently, um Dean just uh, sent me a beer. Can you get it? I've got I, I've gone to Tesco. No, there's nothing there. There are lots of uh, discontinued beers, yes, but nothing new. And a week later, yes, full of uh, full full shelves of different beers, but it was too late. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a bit of hit and miss up and down the country with with. Yeah. This, the, the, this wave of craft beer that's come in Tesco's. I know, um, shout out to Robert at Opsine, um, the, the North Brewing Co., the, the Double Dry Opt IPA. He lives literally about eight or ten miles away from where that's made. His Tesco didn't bloody stock it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. They probably had a, um, a clause in the contract that, that the Tesco's a brewery, like the Tesco's in like a ten-mile radius or of the brewery can't stock it so obviously because otherwise the brewery is going to miss out on people walking in i suppose you know to buy it but it's an exclusive beer for tesco's though isn't it so it's not you know what i mean it's, uh, it's brewed exclusively so I, I don't know i don't know how it, how it works but it's it's a bit of an odd one um i've noticed uh, simon keeps going on about um the morrisons are bringing out a a range and i do a lot of work for morrison's i ain't seen any yet so yeah i i picked one up today um lagunitas maximus oh, oh yeah um, i saw this one yes yeah a, a double ipa eight eight point four or something like that yeah, two pound forty five not bad oh, heineken now aren't they yeah yeah i i only know that because uh that appeared on the, on the ferry um last year in uh in july when i went out to holland in july in germany um yeah it appeared on the ferry and uh yeah it's all the basically heineken it was always on the ferry um and then suddenly this uh lagunitas has appeared and yeah because heineken have brought them out yeah it was, it was quite quite a while ago now when that yeah. happened Sainsbury's, um, Sainsbury's answer to the, the, the Tesco craft beer revolution is to put Beaver Town on the shelves. Yeah, is that is that in six packs or singles? Singles. Oh, right. Singles okay. and packs. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know somebody on this chat that won't be drinking that. <laughs> <laughs> I won't never touch it again. Up the gooners, up the gooners. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, that'll fall wayside like Alston Pills, I tell you. <laughs> oh, dear, right, anyway, back to this. Back to this. Let's let's wrap up on this. Uh, thoughts on it, then, guys? Good solid, good solid Pilsner. Yeah, very decent beer. Simple, uh, but uh, delivering. Deliver, uh, deliver, perfect yeah. delivery on it. Nice, yeah. nice full body, uh, nice aroma, uh, nice bitterness. It's not over the top, but it's nicely uh, pinpoint. Uh, yeah, good, good, solid German beer. Yeah, yeah, very underrated, I'd say. For sure, I'd go with that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's a point. Uh, when uh, I came to england i was trying you know different different um, english beers i wasn't very excited because mostly they were you know just just um, like green kings you know shepherd's names right yeah. I, I i wasn't pleased so i was i was just buying beers from from little you know solid german beers and i was happy with them yeah yeah and, and, well, you and, did you did a week beer a few days ago didn't you mark yeah, the Patronus wheat beer is, yeah, yeah I, I, I wasn't expecting a lot at all. And having had my fair share of wheat beers in my time, um, yeah, it was really, really good and unique because you get the traits of the banana like you usually get in a wheat beer, but it's got this bit of lemon in there, this 
this lemon edge to it, which is totally unique. Um, fantastic beer. What one twenty-five a bottle? You can't. Yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take a look at that if I can, if I come across it because that that sounded like a winner. That did to yeah. me, if, especially um, for the price as well. You know, don't pick up the wrong bottle because there's an alcohol-free one sitting beside it. <laughs> no. 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 Right, so yeah, that's been the Vor Steiner. I think it's a, a thumbs up from all of us. A really decent, solid, well made. Yeah, definitely it's something that you you should try, and you yeah. will not be disappointed. And when you think about it, is is you know I see people in the supermarket, and when I actually bought this, I see people buying the the half litre bottles of Bex because they do the big bottles of Bex um, sit practically alongside the Vor Steiner. And I'm going to say to anyone. Rather than pick up your, your, your half litre bottle of Bex, pick up a yeah, Wallstein. Yeah. Have free Wallsteiner for 525 instead of free Bex for 525. So I'll tell you what, you've got a better beer. A lot better beer. Yeah, and yeah. more. <laughs> and more beer. <laughs> yeah. But more ABV because I think Bex is what, 4.8, isn't it? Or four point, it's not 4.8 like this, it's less than it, Bex. Yeah. Four, is it four? 4.1? Something like that. It's definitely not four eight. No, definitely. Yeah. Right. Moving on swiftly to this new beer from Brewdog that's appeared on the shelves. Funky Spunk. Yeah. Punk yes. it spunk. <laughs> punk. <laughs> you can't you cannot say this without the say the word spunk for some reason. Right. Yeah, part of their their, their new overworks um brewery and i think that is actually next yeah. to their brewery isn't it yeah it, yeah. it, it is a separate brewery for for the you know wild uh, or sour beers from brewdog so it, it is a part of brewdog yeah yeah um, you know five quid a bottle 500 ml uh abv on this guys five actually it's half a liter so 5.5 percent uh yeah. Aged in further, so good. Mm. Open, open cuts and uh, yeah, it looks like it, it, it is a mix of uh, uh, punk IPA and um, Belgian East. Now the first one I've picked up on, and I want to show people. Get your Warsteiner bottle and put the cap <laughs> on it. Then look at the tops of the two bottles. Can you yeah. see the size difference in the caps? Yes, yes, it's much bigger cup. Yeah, a much bigger cap. And I only just noticed that when I went to put my bottle opener on it, and it, it doesn't fit. Just about fits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that don't go on it. Yeah. I'm gonna have to use, oh, yeah. I I have no problem with this one. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm yeah that's. that's I bet you they are the only bottle out there with a cap. Aye, 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 it's very, very lively. Whoa! I'm taking my cap off really carefully because I reckon people want to buy these big caps on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Find out you can get the price of the beer for the cap. <laughs> oh, it's looking good though, guys. It's looking good. Yeah, it it it, it is a slightly slightly. No, misty. It's almost almost orangey color. Uh, in this yeah, light. deep orange, deep orange, gentle carbonation. Considering yeah. the uh, how it wanted to come out of the bottle. Oh, nice. Oh, I can smell it from here. It smells really yeah. nice. Nice, nice, funky aroma. Yeah, funky, a little bit sour. Uh, some uh, stable. Yeah, nice. But, but refreshing as well. Mm. Now, I, I think did, gonna be I, did, now I did wash the bottle before I, I poured this because of the yeast like a Belgian beer. Um, yeah. Or, but obviously our glasses ain't big enough to get the whole bottle. No. We'll, we'll, we'll probably get a, a different appearance on the next pour when we've... Uh, or, or, yeah. or you know when we get down the glass and we put a little what, bit more in. Oh, yeah, it looks really good. 
yeah, I love that. I love that whiff. It's um, I'm I'm getting accustomed to that sort of smell now. Yeah. <laughs> well, def definitely, it is it is a Belgian Belgian uh, side of of this beer. Uh, yeah. you, you you can smell it straight away. Yeah. It it reminds me of something. It's very very typical for something. Uh, it reminds me of a lambic. Yeah, 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 because it's a little bit soury. Yeah. So, so the base beer obviously is punk IPA, and they've just played about yeah. with that recipe. Yeah. And yeah, but it's interesting how they've, with it. how they've played about with it, but it's brought the ABV down because punk IPA is five point six. Uh huh. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah. It's quite quite fruity aroma as well. You, you have like a mango somewhere there. Yeah, it's definitely. It's a bit. It's definitely got the traits of, of Citra, Galaxy. Yeah. I don't know how many hops are in there. Um, actually, uh, actually, uh, they don't say on the bottle, but uh, they use Cascade, Chinook, Hallertau Blanc, Hallertau Mittelfruit, Whole Melon, and Magnum and Simcoe. Oh, really? Line up. Yeah, quite a lot. Uh, yeah. Well, for molds, they use oats, pilsner, wheat, and spelt. Yeah, well, a lot of the um, if you look at a lot of the ingredients with with, with, with brewed dog beers, they do love that pilsner malt in there. Oh yeah, they, they get a lot in, in a lot of their beers. Yeah, right. pretty, pretty nice, uh, refreshing and inviting aroma. Really, yeah, let's go in on it, guys. Cheers. Mm. Cheers. Oh. Oh yes, mm, nice. I don't think I'll drink another punk IPA again. <laughs> it really. Well, that is the business. That is. That's a lovely beer, isn't it? And that it's more it's more funkier and sour on the nose than it is on the taste for me. Yeah, yeah, it's quite quite mild. Uh... Well, isn't it? You you have nice nice uh, you know like um, uh, wet uh, wet uh, saddle or a little bit little bit of sourness here but it's very very mild. Uh, you have some some fruity notes as well. Uh, yeah, fruity. Like, sort like, of thing. like, a, like a, um um. Light fruits in there definitely. Yeah. Some some um, smokiness as well. It reminds me a little bit, Christoph, of that of that sour that we did last night with that gooseberry sort of yes. tart, mm -hmm. isn't it? You know what I mean? That that yeah. puckering a bit tart, yes. It's, yeah. got, it's got a sort of similar um, uh, a gauche style to it, a proper like from Leipzig, a proper gauche um, in in the background there. yeah i was a bit when i when i saw it and it was five quid i thought this 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 has really got to deliver like this is if they're if they're putting this out on the supermarket shelves for five quid aiming to reel in people that are curious about beer it's got to work because that's that's quite a price tag isn't it for a supermarket yeah. beer and single you know for some people yeah you know that that, that people would look at it and think, nah, I'm not paying five quid for one bottle of beer. These are, like, these are Waitrose prices in a Tesco, aren't they? But when you think about Waitrose, yeah. you've got like, some of the Fuller's beers and some of the Wild beers, haven't they? That are like like the Fuller's Imperial Stout is eight quid a bottle. You've got well, mm. Wild beer, the Champagne wild one. Wild beer, it's the big, yeah. yeah it's, it's about seven and a half quid. So they're, they're, they're sort of punching into what's called the, the what I call the premium supermarkets. Mm. But credit credit to them. I, I think it, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a good beer, actually. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. The only thing is, we're enjoying it now, right? It's a nice beer. How long is it going to be around? Is the next one because Brew Dog have this habit of producing a great beer, putting it out on the supermarket shelves. Everyone loves it. Yeah, yeah. disappears. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, it just oh, it changes oh, oh, like like Punk IPA. It yeah, changed. version one, one, version two. Yeah. No, oh, Punk IPA was originally what was six point odd percent, wasn't it? Original yeah. Punk a IPA. Cloudy, a cloudy, a cloudy six percent IPA. Yeah. And it's originally not... just in bottles as well. You couldn't get it in cans. Yeah, just bottles. Yeah, the old the old Brewdog label on it. That um, yeah. I like I like the old Brewdog label. Hit it, the, the new one become 5.6 when it when it appeared in cans didn't it overnight didn't it so mm. but yeah i mean this this is a really interesting little beer from brew dog i'm i'm quite happy now now in aroma it's more more sourness <laughs> yeah the, the, the aroma screams more than, than you know the, than the taste i think for me it's, it's quite you do, you do pick that sourness up but it's not it's not as punchy as the aroma um it's quite chewy it sticks to your teeth you're finding that it's it, yeah it, it's a, there's, a, there's a good body to the beer as well isn't it it's not too yeah it's quite, quite grainy quite grainy from from wheat uh and bitterness it's not very high as well it is a little bit too long i think um but i think the east is playing a role a little bit in, in a bitterness here uh so you have like you know um sour sour dough somewhere here uh yeah it's difficult because it, it's very um uh, complex beer but very mild so you yeah. have to pick up those those, those little things uh, so yeah, you have to drink it, you know, in a, in a room temperature because if it will be too cold, you will not get it. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. It's uh, I find it sticks to my teeth, and it is quite a sort of a, like I say, chewy beer. Um, mm. It's in your mouth for a long time, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah, it hangs about quite a bit. Yeah. I'm getting a, I'm getting a, a, on the aftertaste for me as well. I'm getting like a little bit of like. Um, tinned pineapple uh, pineapple chunk yeah. sort of thing yeah the, <clears throat> there is a lot, a lot of you know exotic fruits here uh so yeah actually the taste is changing a little bit with time it's it's a great beer to have but one bottle it's not a beer you could go and drink all night long at all you could not drink this all night long no no especially, no. especially no. that you have this funky aftertaste that yeah. uh, after, after a few bottles <laughs> you would find it the following morning isn't it? it's still yeah. gonna yeah you're yeah. <laughs> gonna wake up and still have that aftertaste the following morning yeah 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 it, it'd be like, like like this situation say for argument's sake that we did manage to get the keg of vorsteiner we 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 you know we got a oh no it just disappeared out of it. anywhere <laughs> yeah yeah well uh, you know hypothetically we've got we've got our voice steiner keg sitting next to us we poured the first one we've drunk it we've enjoyed it we move on to this brew dog beer you go back to the voice steiner then wouldn't you and you just yeah. settle on that i think yeah I, I, it's not a beer that you'd want to session the hell out of no, i don't no. think yeah no i wouldn't want to do that one one glass is enough you know it's uh yeah mm. especially that it is quite gassy yeah yeah, it is. It's surprising. It's, it's actually, I'm going to say this now, it's more gassy than a war, the war steiner. Yeah, you, it is. And yet, you look at it and you hardly see yeah. Yeah. Any, any carbonation in it whatsoever. It's so deceiving, yeah. isn't it? And it really is. You, you feel it. Your, your stomach is sort of like, you know, like someone's playing the drums in your stomach, can it? It's, it's, it really is. A lot of gassy is deceiving beer. Yeah. You know the, the bubbles are tiny, but you know there's lots of them. Yes. Mm. I'm just going to check through the comments, just see if there's anyone tuning in. Oh, we've got a couple of couple of folk in. Terry's quick beer reviews. He says, "Hello guys, nice to see you live again." Hello Terry. Hope you're well, mate. One sub ten. He said, "Is that Brewdog Funk Punk 500 mil or 600 mil plus?" No, 500 only. 500. Five hundred, yeah. And then we got David Etchells. He says, "Would it go well with barbecue food?" 
Depends uh, which one. Uh, Mark, Mark, Wolf, go for it. And Wolf, 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 Wolf Stein, I would, but oh, I, would, yeah. I would not have this 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 brew dog thing with barbecue food. Um, not for long. <laughs> I wouldn't even fancy it with with a, with a meal, to be honest. It's a sit alone beer. It's a yeah. It's too gassy. It's it, it would it would ruin your food. It's not smooth enough to have with food. Yeah, I can't. I can't see what it <laughs> work with with food. I mean, the Vorstein, yeah, you could you could sit that alongside anything, a bloody sausage sandwich, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the the, the brew dog, yeah. I'm, I'm, what would what would go with it? What would go with it? Nothing. Mm. Nothing. It's too gassy. It's too sweet and sour curry, maybe. No, no. It's it's just too much going on in the in it. No, I think, I think it's too complex. You know. Uh, there's different things uh, here because you have sourness, you, you have nice, a uh, nice uh, fruitiness, uh, exotic fruits, uh, funkiness. Uh, there's a lot, and you don't want to mess up with with anything else because you will lose it. Mm. Yeah, my tip for, for for barbecue beer this summer is that. What's that? That's the that, that's the Thornbridge pink, pink grapefruit hallucin. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's that's my tip for for. Oh, right, it's seven point four percent. It don't drink like that, no, does it? For, what's that? No, no, that, it drinks like a four percent yeah. beer. That's yeah. the worst thing about it. Um, but that's my tip for a great beer to have with your barbecue food this summer on a hot day. Mm. It's so refreshing. Um, fantastic. Mm. I'll be stocking my beer fridge up with that ready for yeah that, that's a that's a beer i'll go back to uh, the, the pink grapefruit is a is a go-to beer for me for for the up-and-coming summer twisted oh, sour as well that's that's another one that i'll go back to what was that one twisted sour mate yeah twisted sour fantastic because it's not as sour my missus likes that night like, my missus don't like sour beers because they give a heartburn yeah that one doesn't no that's it, it I mean, I mentioned this last night with Christoph. The, the sour beers that the supermarkets have introduced, I think, are bang on because they're not too intrusive with the sourness. Because yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of the style anyway, but the ones that I've had of, for my palate, have been a okay with regards to the, you know, the, the toned down sourness in it. It's there, but it's very, very subtle, and it doesn't yeah. destroy the beer for my palate. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's sour beers is something I got introduced years, you know, obviously into Belgium with Creeks and the you know, Alambics, and then obviously in Leipzig with your, your Gauche beers. Um, I really like the Gauche beers in, in Leipzig. Um, uh, your Berliner Hot Devices, they're nice, but they're not a beer I choose because of the ABV. They're all about three point two, three and a half percent. It's it's something which yeah. But the original, the original sour beer is still the, the gauche because it 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 sort of came about in the 13th century, way before any of, of these Berliner Weisses and Creeks and Lambics, and that was the original sour beer. Mm. But but I do believe the gauche is around the sort of 4.5, 4.6, 4.8 Whereas a lot of the sours we're finding now are approaching six percent, aren't they? A lot of them, yeah, really yeah, yeah. You know, the double double beers are imperial beers are you know that's now very uh, popular. So you have uh, even like we recently done um, uh, imperial Gordiske. The original uh, style it's like two point eight three percent. Right. Yeah, and you have uh six point seven for example, you know, imperial glorious kind of like, uh, what it's supposed to be you know, lively uh, champagne type of beer, uh very low ABV, just smoked. Well, it it is a take on the style, 
definitely. Um, but yeah, it is very popular to, to make imperial versions of everything. Yeah. Mm. My, 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 my favorite imperial IPA that I've had, and I still reckon it's, it's the number one imperial IPA I've had, is by a German brewery called Camden. An imperial uh, IPA. Camber. Camber Bavaria. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, their Imperial IPA. I've never had it, but I've, I've, heard, I've heard things before. It's getting bold of a bottle, really are. They've actually told me, uh, Cambo, that if I were down that way, that's really, that's what south of Munich that is. That's a long way down from Munich. And uh, they said, if you're ever down that way, just pop in and come and see us. But that's a long old drive down there, Dean. Yeah. It's, you know. Um, Make make sure your boots empty, mate. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, what's the trouble? It's like you know, you go on these. There's very little space to bring back some beer. That's a trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I do I do get what you mean with the gassiness, though, uh, Mark. Yeah. I'm feeling it a little bit now myself. Yeah, it, it's a very very repeating beer, isn't it? It's deceiving because it's yeah it's quite mild but you know what uh yeah it's quite gassy i'm gonna still taste that tomorrow on that isle of white ferry anyway <laughs> Burp. burping breath and ices <laughs> <laughs> that's why i'm um, glad we didn't get that keg today because i've got to go to the isle of white for a, for a meeting so, yeah, yeah. I think, I think that that's probably a blessing in disguise. Us not been be, been able to get that because that that would have been uh, a bit 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 of a challenge, wouldn't it? Well, that would have been that would have been in, in, in my diary. That would have been working from home tomorrow. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right then, summing summing this uh, this brew dog beer up. Then uh, final thoughts on this beer, then, guys. Well, interesting, uh, quite complex, um, but still soft and uh, approachable. I think it was designed for a you know, wider um, audience uh, because the, there is no extremes in this beer. Right? You have a little bit of funkiness, a little bit of, a little bit of sour notes, uh, but still you have nice um, fruitiness exotic fruits uh nice bitterness but still low so just the middle range right so for everyone just to try a uh, craft beer right yeah to, to buy a new cost customer mm. it's a great example oh. of a craft beer but it's not a beer you'd want two bottles of and I think a newcomer might look at it and think, oh, that looks funky, and buy two or three bottles. Yeah. And then have the first bottle, have the second bottle, and by the time they get to the third bottle, it and could actually yeah. buy any more craft beer, and they would work back to their Fosters and Carlin. That's yeah. my only concern. Let's come back to the Wallsteiner. Yeah. Oh, I've drunk mine. <laughs> You know what? A little bit of try it, try it, try it, try now. Uh, Warsteiner, it's lovely. Oh, it's a lovely palate cleanser from yeah. it, isn't it? Yeah, um, I drank mine, unfortunately. But, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a, um, it's a little bottle of beer. I mean, definitely, I, I do, I do from t time to time go back to Warsteiner quite a bit. I know last summer. I had quite a lot of that um, when we when when we had that marvelous summer that we had, and hopefully that will repeat this year. That was a sort of go-to sort of beer for me because it's it's cheap and it's it's decent. It delivers for the price, really. The the the, the brew dog funk punk. Uh, I can see this being knocked down in price. I can I can see Tesco knocking it down like yeah. they did on some of the original. Focus yeah. beers. Oh yeah, when it was like, was it two quid a cat? Well, one hundred and fifty at one stage, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Buy, steady, steady prices. Now I've got a load in my fridge. I paid one pound fifty a can for it. Well, that's just you, you, that's, you. take it all day long. Yeah, uh, I can see yeah, this beer being. 
The trouble uh, is with this, this, this punk to funk, right? It's it's not even a beer that you could say, like, if you've been drinking beer like all day long and you thought, right, I'm going to end the night with this. It's not even a beer you could end the night with, is it? If you, no, if you know not, what I mean. not a I would finish on, no. No, that's not no. a beer. No, it's not a, It's not that special, like, you've had, you've drunk your, I don't know, your five or six cans of Fosters, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I think it's just, uh, uh, just example of uh, uh, politics of, of uh, Brewdog. It's just a curiosity, right? Yeah. Something, something uh, different, uh, to, supposed to, you know, the shock audience, but still, I think it's it's mainly produced for uh, supermarkets, so yeah. it be for you know for everyone to try, because it's super it, in supermarket, uh, and everyone will try it definitely, mm. because it's, it's going to be the only the only overworks release I think that's going into Tesco's because I know yeah. I know they've got about four three or four five maybe. Different yeah, I think, types of I think about five uh, uh, beers out at the moment, but they're, they're like sort of website yeah, and yeah, yeah. Box, so there's bottle shops. There's uh, one called Quince that I've heard is pretty good. Um, yeah, they, they have five five beers now. So it's yeah. uh, Cosmic Crush, uh, Tropical Quince, Raspberry, Cherry, and Quince. Quince, yeah, that's the one I've heard of. Yeah, and and uh, Funk and Punk. So that mm. those five beers from other works. I think this is a dangerous beer because this could put people who see it on the supermarket shelf and think, oh, I'll, I'll buy that, I'll try that. And that could put people off drinking further craft beer. People who have not got into, like, like real ale drinkers, your foster mm. carling drinkers, see it on the shelf and think, oh, what's that about? It's five pounds. You know, I've done a bit of overtime of work, I've got a bonus, I'll treat myself to a bottle, go back home, try it, and I think they could suddenly turn around and go, what a load of shit this craft beer is. It's Yeah, I, 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 think, we, we a here. Here. Yeah. I yeah. think this beer has no catchy point, right, that you would like to come back to this beer. Uh, so it's it's fine it's mild but maybe because it's mild uh you would not want to come back because yeah, yeah. because if it would be extreme beer right you would say okay it's extreme beer i will not drink it every day but it's something special but this one it's not no no but, but, but what you gotta realize is, is christoph is we drink craft beer all the time so we sort of know what to sort of expect and not expect and to us you know we, we all decided that this is, a, this is a nice mild beer um that we could drink a bottle of but not have another bottle yeah but to someone you think someone who has never had a craft beer before buy a bottle of this and i i actually think it it could actually put them off Mm. Going this craft beer, or I don't like this. Or repeats on me. Lots of factors that uh, ordinary beer drinker would not be familiar with, because mm. it's it's a uh, funkiness. Uh, yes. You you have different smells uh, and the yeah. price as well. <laughs> Pr price, yes, of course. Yeah. Deceiving deceiving um, bottle, because when I looked on, the, on this, I thought, okay, it, it's it's a bomber. No, it's not. It's a half a liter, right? Yeah. Uh, and then it's really not easy beer. The introduction to craft beer uh, product is supposed to be easy, easy to digest, right? So something special, but not so much. And here you have different things, too many different things uh, to start with, right? So if someone was not introduced to Belgian beers, uh, to sour beers, uh, to IPA. Can't can't think about this beer as uh, 
thing that can come back to because it's so strange mm. yeah yeah for us, no, very mild, for us it's very mild beer that you know what uh, it's just under under the radar right so I don't find it very easy drinking no it's not I think, Dean, I think dean's finding the same as well seeing him sit back there it's not a very easy drinking beer is it it um it, yeah that that carbonation's playing a little bit of yeah. yeah um I, I mean i don't i don't mind it i think i think it's i think it's a good beer from brew dog yeah um my, my only thing with it is like i like i said before about it um i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna run that back a little bit what i was saying before about it being uh in the supermarkets for that reason i think it's probably the most um complex beer on the shelves at the moment for a new oh, beer yeah. shall we say, coming in um you know there's some double ipas on the shelves that are, that are fantastic it, it, they hit the mark this this yeah th this is a different ball game altogether well don't you think Dean, the line, obviously, maybe. obviously when tesco's have approached these breweries yeah to put some beer on their shelves in the new range right it seems to me as though brewdog has sort of said yeah we're interested who have you else have you approached? The Tesco's have sort of told them we've, we've approached Magic Rock, um, Crate, uh, Thornbridge, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. Have thought, oh, right, right. So we want to stick something on the shelf that's better than what they're going to put on the shelf. So they've stuck yeah. this on the shelf. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, I don't know, what is it? There's thirty odd beers or whatever they've, they've, they've put together, aren't they? At the moment, Tesco's mm -hmm. and 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 Brood are basically for. We want to be the number one. We want to be the one that's, you know, we don't want to be middle of the range like the rest of them. No, I, 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 I do get that logic in that. Me personally, as much as this beer is, you know, I, I do like this beer. I, I'm not, I'm not rubbishing it or anything oh, like that. Okay. I would have been I would have been a bit more happier seeing like an unfiltered punk IPA. I think that would have made me yeah. a bit more yeah. yeah. You know what? Uh we are saying oh, no, it's not for everyone. Um but yes, it is a complex beer. Uh mild but complex. So yeah. not for everyone, definitely. Uh the person who would approach this beer have to have some knowledge of other styles and yeah, then the not gonna like it yeah and then enjoy different things from this beer mm. finding those those different flavors aromas mm. if someone doesn't know those things will not enjoy it yeah no. that's the problem i, I can i can knowledge of the different style when you when you drink this beer Definitely. yeah i i completely get that theory because I, i've i've actually walked i've walked in them shoes when when i was like moving over i, I was a i was a, a a macro lager drinker i dabbled with the real ale um and then when all this stuff started appearing on shelves i moved over to it with beers like siren craft thornbridge yeah. Um, which was, uh, you know, I, I could keep up with the pace of them beers for, for like moving over from what I was drinking, but I, I sort of like tried to leapfrog a little bit too quick and I was buying, I, I mean, the first beer I can remember to this day still, it was a Demolin beer, it was an old Rasputin, uh, an Imperial Stout, and it was about 11% ABV. Yeah. It sounded absolutely beautiful on the, on the you know, the, the you know chocolate, roasty coffee. I thought, yeah, like, I love that. Opened it up. The alcohol kicked me off i couldn't I, I just couldn't handle it it yeah. was boozy yeah. it was it was horrible now love it <laughs> love an imperial stout one of my favorite styles you've just gotta you've got to walk that tight road yeah. a little bit you have to you have to learn your way right so yes. you know, with, with different beers uh, and, and this is not introducing beer definitely no it's too complex no, this is a beer for an experienced drinker. 
someone who who's, who's who's drunk the punk IPA, they drunk the Elvis juice. You yeah. know, you know what? You know, this beer is, I think, designed to uh, compare uh, punk IPA with this one and enjoy. But still, you have to have a quite a um, extent knowledge of, of beers to yeah. compare those beers and uh, enjoy them both. I think if anyone, if anyone looking at this video now, looking at us chatting away, who's not in a craft beer, and is thinking, "Oh, I'd like to try that," right? Unless you've sort of gone down the route of having a like a four pack, like gone and got four pack of Punk IPA, gone and bought their Elvis juice, yeah, and then perhaps add a couple of Durells and. Uh, maybe a delirium and sort of go around the edges of the rest of the, the Tesco beer. Right, once you've done that, then go and buy this. Yeah. Right, unless you've done that, don't buy this because you're not going to appreciate this beer for what it is. You're going to hate it and probably put your craft beer for life. No, th that's a problem. Uh, people would not understand what's, what's in it. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, and unless you've had the other beers, Christoph, you're not going to like this beer. It's, mm. it's going to be too complex, too... You, you know, even even if, if you would tell to, um, someone new uh, that beer can smell like, you know, like like, like a stable or what say, uh, saddle, um, yeah, some, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, something like this, and like, uh, they would say, uh, what? I yeah. don't want this. It can be it can be pleasant, but yeah, you have to. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely an acquired taste, an acquired aroma, an acquired taste. You know, yeah. maybe the the price point of this beer are they positioning it to to put them sort of people off from doing it? But then I'm thinking, well, why is it in in Tesco's anyway? You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I I think it is like yes, this is our. I will stand here, and this is the best beer on the shelf. It's five five pounds for a small bottle. Uh, it's only half a liter. It's not not a bomber. So, yes, uh, it will stand up. It is some statement, uh, but yes, it, it's it's not for uh, average drinker. Definitely, I I, I still remember that uh, I had I had a very nice. Um, oh, I uh, uh, think in in a pub, right? I, I came to the pub and I saw the first first time pitted stout, right? So I've ordered pitted stout, and the uh, barman said, "You know, do you really want this?" I said, "Yes, even if I will not like it, I want to try." <laughs> right? Actually, the smell was awful, right? So it was like a domestos, uh, you know, public toilet, something like. That. Yeah, yeah. Uh, burned cables, something like this. <laughs> this is a weather space. <laughs> it was beautiful. This was beautiful. Right. So yes, uh, I know it can be difficult, uh, but I think this this uh, um, adventure. This is adventure uh, when you take you know something very out of your range. To try it, I think what people have got to realise with this beer is, 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 is there's three people here that drink a lot of beer and have, have drunk a lot of beer, and when we're saying that sort of it's a one bottle beer, hmm. you take it from there basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that I think that 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 sums it up pretty to a T, mate. Yeah. It's a one bottle experience. Yeah, yeah. And if you like it, go and buy another, buy another bottle the following weekend. But if, if, if that's what it is, you know, yeah. in, in a session, it's not, a, in one, a, it's not a one bottle beer in the in in the state that you know you drink it once and never have it again. No, it's a one bottle beer for an evening. So you could have a bottle of this on Friday night, a Saturday night, a Sunday lunchtime, and then move mm. on to other stuff. That's the way I describe this beer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. You, you know, whole whole evening drinking the same beer. 
Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> definitely. That would crazy it, it will choke you. I, I like, I, I do like sessioning beers now and again, but because of, because of doing this beer review in Lark, it's, I, I like trying different beers. So I don't want to get too bogged down with the same beer all the time. And, and this beer, to me i've tried it now yes i wouldn't want to oh fuck it. I'm, I'm full of fucking gas <laughs> <laughs> what you gotta think of is you gotta think of beers that if you're out in a pub of an evening and it was on tap would you drink it all night long because i'm going to tell you this now if we're ever in a pub the three of us there's always a beer that we might try a few other beers but there's always a beer we're always going to revert back to and continue drinking all night long yeah, you know what? The beer, if it was on tap, you would do revert back to and start drinking all night long, would it? Ah, uh, no. But we are, mm. we are very specific people because we want to try as many beers as possible. <laughs> yeah, 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 you say that, but I, I'm still old school. That if there's a yeah. beer, I'm drinking a bottle. This beer, definitely. Yeah. No, the, 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 there are there are certain beers that that hit that sweet spot where you you can just drink and drink and drink yeah. you know you're in, that, you, you're in that environment whether it be in the summer and you're you, you, you're grilling some meat and whatnot you know you've got you've got that i mean for me personally for me pilsner urkel and probably vorsteiner um just not back it not back easy switch off beers yeah. that deliver yeah definitely it, it's very very like a varsteiner it's very uh, nice uh Easy drinking, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and very pleasant beer. So you would like to come back to this beer. Yeah. Mm. Cam Camden, Camden, we, we, we mentioned this last night as well, Christoph. Oh, Camden. The Camden Town Hellers. That's a oh, decent yeah. beer. That's a good go-to yeah. beer. You know, a well made a well made uh, Hellers style beer. It's a shame they've stopped doing it in cans. It's going getting bottles. Yeah, it's all four packs now, isn't it? Bottles and and can you can you get it in the six six bottles and um and four packs of bottles? But they used to do it in four packs of cans, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Weird why they stopped doing that. I prefer the Pilsner actually, the Camden Pils. But that's you, you can only get that in Waitrose. What was that IABV beer that you had off them? What's that? That IABV Pilsner that you had from Camden. Oh, was, uh, yeah, yeah, that is, yeah, uh, yeah. That's yeah. the business, that is, yeah. yeah. Imperial Pilsner, yeah, 10% jobby, yeah. They bring it out every year, apparently. That is, you know. The thing is, it feels like you're drinking a, a, a four five four point eight percent Pilsner. It doesn't feel like a 10% Pilsner. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to your review of that weeknight lager, uh, Mark. <laughs> weeknight, yeah, three <laughs> percent, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think you're gonna like it, mate. You know what? I don't <laughs> mind uh, that it has three percent, uh, but it just there's no aroma here, right? Oh, yeah, it was fucking disappointing. Rubbish, it was if it was a uh, nice aroma. It was okay. It would be okay, you know what? But there was no aroma. So what? What's the point? No, I'm going to use this me, me, my palate cleanser for me. Uh, my little trap oak aged bottle that I'm going to review next weekend on Easter Sunday, <laughs> oh, which was seven, that's, that's it, that's seventeen it. quid a bottle. That is. I've got but, batch 32, uh, and some of my Dutch friends are telling me this batch 33 is already out. Um, they wow. bring out a new batch every year, and they're, they're, they're aged in different barrels. Now, the one I've got is, I think it's aged in a white wine barrel, and uh -huh. the new one, uh, batch 33, is uh, aged in bourbon. Bourbon, all right. Yeah, so, yeah. So is that, they're 750s, aren't they? No, no, no. This the trap is a three thirty mil bottle, seventy. Yeah, yeah, standard size bottle, seventeen quid. And what you got to realise is, is like I said to you, is all these quad beers. People think they come from Belgium. They don't. The the the, the trap. Dutch. Yeah. Them. The Dutch. The Dutch yeah. invented quads. 
Eleven percent. Why not? Why not? Should, it should it should make for good uh, a good drinking experience though. Oh yes, yes, and I've been told by a couple of Dutch friends, believe it or not, they said, "How much do you pay in England for that bottle?" They told them seventeen quid, and they went, "That's quite good, actually, really." But you think that over in uh, Holland, they they have to. They said, "How the hell did you get it in England to not make the sell it outside the monastery?" I went, "I don't care." <laughs> but apparently, it's twelve euros a bottle. Isn't it? Twelve euros. It's a bit like. West Fletcherian, isn't it? West Fletcherian. Is it Westy 10, is it, that's, that's quite sought well, after? Westy 12, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, apparently you're not meant to really sell it or anything like that, but they still, you know, I could get hold of a bottle tomorrow if I wanted it, but it's about, 20, it's about 25 quid a bottle, isn't it, in the UK? I've, I've never actually seen it for sale in the UK. I've, I've seen it on uh, Beer Jump when they yeah. bring it out, and it's about... I think they knock it out at about eight euros, ten euros a bottle, or something like that over there. He's got it um, down at a beautiful beers where I go in Bury St Edmunds. He's got the two, he's got the the twelve, and he's got the blonde one. And the and the twelve he charges twenty five quid for, and the blonde one he charges nineteen ninety five for. So that's oh, God, yeah, that's fucking repeating on me now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. my god. Oh. Nearly gone. Nearly gone. Well done, mine. Yeah, right. I mean, it it I would buy it again. I wouldn't rush out to buy it again, but I I would come and stumble across it again. But like I said earlier, I think this is gonna be the one that um succumbs to the 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 price cut i think out of out of a few of them then we'll buy lots of it again <laughs> well if, if, if they shave if they shave bloody two pound fifty off it then yeah, oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be the bridge up with it won't you I'll be pulling them off the shelves um well even even three quid i i you know i'd i'd, I'd have a few for three quid um yeah, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. No, no. Overall, it's quite nice. It's, beer, not, it's not bad for experienced drinker. Definitely. Definitely for experienced. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that experienced drinker. Mm. Mm. And that's not an experienced yeah. drinker who just bought Carl in Foster's all their life. <laughs> well, it'd be it'd be. I've got I've got mates that drink that shit and if I if I gave them well they'd they'd sniff it and run a mile yeah 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 um so you're flogging a dead horse trying to sort of for my for my mates anyway waste waste of bloody time sort of they're just that's what they drink end off you know they're not interested horses for courses isn't it? different strokes for different folks well that's why still um, you know those mass-produced beers are very well sold because people like them definitely I, I was i was one of them i was one of them guys you know you you, you don't you don't go to the bar to order a beer to to ponder over it you go over there to drink it don't you yeah but, do you know what i mean but but when you sort of get into it a little bit more you want to sort of um examine the beer in your head don't you when you're, you're trying it and stuff when you're out with your mates and you're a young lad you, you're not interested in any of that you just want to get you want to get pissed don't you that's it <laughs> that's it boils down to yeah you, you know what i think i think our kids uh will be more wiser because they they know the stuff from us because we will learn them a little bit oh no don't buy this no 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 it's no, awful. No, stay away. Yeah. Try, try something yeah. different. You know. Yeah. Try. Uh, make your own judgment on on this, but it's not good. Mm. You you can have a better beer. Yeah. Yeah. Learning curve. Yeah. Especially the. J just imagine you will go to Germany and you can drink with your daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
because they're drinking age 16 so why not 16 yeah not not that not not she that she'd want to anyway because she she hates she hates the smell of it anyway whether it be macro beer or craft beer. oh no 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 you know what uh you can you can um do you remember i i've told you about this um um beer what it was uh marble beer uh, no no it was uh, from manchester with uh oxalot on on the can this was like a three percent beer but very nice uh fruity aroma and my daughter said oh this is a beer that i would like to drink beautiful yeah. aroma mild uh, but still fruity and she said oh yes this is beer for me mm -hmm. so you know what you can always find the beer for the person doesn't matter who it is you just need to ask what you like do you like wine okay i will find you a beer that tastes like wine mm -hmm. oh, yeah. because there's there's plenty of them if someone likes gin okay no problem i will find you a beer with gin they are on the market why not yeah, yeah. That's, that's the beauty of craft beer as well isn't it the, yeah. the experimenting of it and messing about with different flavor variations if you like chocolate let's try this stout you know oh yeah there's plenty of stouts out there with chocolate in oh yeah yeah i've, uh, I've still got her i found it the other day it's just in date i've got to do that it's i've got a brood of nebula nebula okay yeah. Yeah. well you can can be yeah yeah and yeah i heard about this yeah nebula. is that from that um monthly release thing that they do then, yeah yeah they? i was up in leeds and uh yeah went in brew dog leeds and they sell it on the counter don't they you can sort of as i left there i sort of grabbed the three cans and oh. Well, the one I'm interested in at the moment is from um, I'm going to go and visit him uh, in July. Is the, the Doctor Van de Coroner down in uh, in Holland or Belgium? It's, it's a town that's split. He has some fantastic beers. I'm lucky enough to be able to just walk in my bottle shop in Bury St Edmunds where, where I go, and he has them on the counter. So yeah, wow. I've got another one I've got to do. But the, the, his beers are a bit special. They are yeah, very very yeah. good. As you know, Simon went there for a visit, didn't he? Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, um, I, I do like his yeah. beers. But I was actually thinking, I was actually thinking about right next May, if there's plenty of time to save up, right, is maybe having a, a get together of beer reviews, rouge for the weekend. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'd be, I'd be up for it. Whether it's doable or not for me financially or not, I don't know. But it's something I'd, I'd like to go over there and yeah. Well, that's why I say it's, it's like uh, if something about a year's time, you know, we all have a meet up in Bruges. Mm. You know, it gives it gives it, I, I, it's a goal and something you can like you know save up for financially. You know, yeah. it's a yeah. May bank holiday. Get over yeah. there on Friday and uh, have the Saturday, and if if people want they go home on the sunday or me and the missus will probably just disappear into holland you know what i mean after <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 i think we could probably get a bit of a following over there bruise bruise for the weekend yeah do, do do a bit of live stuff while we're over there maybe yeah yeah so we get old simon there and a few of the others yeah. and <laughs> yeah do good, good 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 crack yeah yeah, something, something I'd think about anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's just, just over a year's time, so it's something you can sort of, you know. Work towards. Work towards, put a little bit here and there away, you know. Yeah. A little bit of secret squirrel stash or whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like oh, yeah. Your secret squirrel, squirrel yeah. <laughs> Let me just have a quick butcher's at the comments. If I can get them up. <clears throat> oh, I want to 
want to go slow. <laughs> well, you're going slow as well. <laughs> That's the beauty of internet. You, you don't know, you know. Oh yeah. How busy how busy line it is. And yeah, I upgraded. <laughs> I upgraded about two months ago. It's absolutely fucking shocking now. Oh. Okay, what we got on here? Uh, yeah, yeah, a bit, bit, bit quiet tonight. I fuck it. I, 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 why don't you, whoever's thumbing down these videos? Why don't you just leave a comment and tell me why instead of fucking pissing off? Every time I get a live, do a live review. Now I'm getting it. What are you getting? Oh, uh, just some cock putting a thumbs down. Leave a comment. Oh. That's what we want. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell you know that's that's a little bit more constructive than doing that in my book. I've actually got a stalker on my channel. Oh, well, then again, I've just been real. I've just been reeled in then because I ra I went on a rant and I, I should have been a bit sort of let it go over me. Oh, don't worry about it. I've actually got I've actually got a stalker on my channel. Right, all my videos have got two thumbs down. Same geezer because he actually outed himself on a when Simon done a live review. You yeah, I, I, I was Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, me stalker. And he went, it, it, worst one was, he went, if, every time you block me, I will just reopen a new YouTube account to, to put a thumbs down. And I went, no <laughs> one. <what?" laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got, all you want to do is level, I mean, it's, yeah, it's fucking pathetic. It is absolutely pathetic. <laughs> There's better things to worry about in life than this. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just bloody beer, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. not the be all and end all. But I couldn't believe it. It's like I wondered who it was. I thought I had one, and then he come out on the, on that Simon's review, didn't he? He'd come out and started giving me a bit of grief, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I went, Don't worry, you're blocked, mate. And he come back with another another alias, didn't he? That was the funniest yeah. one. I blocked yeah. him on one. He come back with another one, and then he started on someone else. Didn't he? he started on someone else and a few others. He's, he's, having, he's having a go at pint sized as well, wasn't he? Didn't he have a go at yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's having a go, really. Yeah. And um, yeah. I blocked him straight away, and then he come back on a different Grant Cooper. He's now called. I blocked him today. Come on, uh, Grant Cooper, Calvin Klein Classics. <laughs> 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 oh. Fair play. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I suppose you know that's that's the good thing about it, though. Laugh, laughing, laughing about it um you know not and not getting a little bit of road rage you know you just gotta sort of, <laughs> yeah, <but we're, laughs> just go <called> block <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean yeah i just it, it just you, um, power, you know <laughs> you know the, the the beauty the beauty of the the human being isn't it it's just like how i was i was his bra brain wired up you know it is it, it, especially when he's even said oh we'll just keep opening a new account a new account just to you know what I mean? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> it's wrong with you, mate. <laughs> I, I, watch, I watch all sorts on YouTube, whether it be beer reviews or, or whatever, yeah. you know, whatever I click on. If I don't like something, I just come away from it. I don't feel the need to do it. I was that. always brought up with a kid when he used to have, like, a, what was the program where people used to moan about the TV programs? And I'm like, as a kid, I remember my parents used to watch it and they go, like, if you don't like the program, don't watch it. Don't write a letter into the BBC. You, you know, oh, maybe White Yeah, but after that, um, who done it after that, wasn't it? Oh, I can't remember. It used to be a program where he's he's writing a moan about TV programs. Isn't it? What? What? Watched on, no. Watched no. Yeah, 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 or watch. yeah, yeah. Uh, what the viewers said, you know. Yes, they didn't like the uh, and, and they're showing you know recent um comments you know on, on the Facebook. Okay. What, yeah, it's just 
Cra crazy, crazy. I mean, uh, as, as social media goes for me, this is probably only it, really. I don't, I don't really get too involved in anything else because of um, just, just crap. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not too fussed with it. Um, I've never, I've never, I've never been really into any of that anyway. Really, you know, it just, it's not, it's not my thing. Call, call me old fashioned or whatever, but it's just, it's whatever, you know. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I get. I like it. You get a ban. You get banned, and you have to get Facebook yeah. banned for saying something. And hold on, what's wrong with what I just said? It's like mm. it reminds me of of the old. And it was so how how far ahead of his time was George Orwell? George Orwell, bloody hell! Yeah, nineteen eighty four in nineteen forty eight. Yeah, and you think well, that book? If you read it, watch the film with uh, John Hurt in it. Uh, John Hurt. Uh, yeah, you watch that film. Late John Earth, How yeah. far ahead of his time was George Orwell? It was perhaps twenty-five years out, wasn't he? If he'd have called it two thousand and nine, I think he would have been spot on. Yeah, instead yeah. of nineteen eighty-four. Well, it was quite accurate. Uh, for the eastern eastern hemisphere right because uh, yeah. i remember i remember i was i was um, doing this book as uh, you know the uh, must must have book in, in school right and actually i was i was teaching this this book you know in 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 the class i think it was um yeah four class in in uh, high school and it was quite nice um, take on the communist state where we've been living in, right? So it was different perspective because we've been taking this book as it was reality, right? Because everyone was invigilated, right? Everyone was uh, had a neighbor spy. Uh, so you know, yes, it it was a reality in Eastern Europe. Well, the only thing is, me as a kid, so growing it, up, it was taken differently, you know, in, in Eastern Eastern countries. Yeah, mm. as me as a kid growing up in sort of England in the seventies and eighties, the only thing you I actually knew about Poland was was it Kazmir Dina, the footballer who absconded and went to play for Man City. And the other one was on the TV, Lech Wałęska. Lech Wałęska. Yeah. Yes. Who started the revolution, really, didn't he? he? got jailed. He was a bit like our um, Nelson Mandela type character, weren't he? Level, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, I remember back in the day, every time he turned the news on, it was always something about Lech Wałęska, wasn't it? And having speeches and rallies and. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm just going to pop to the loo, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, there was not not so many um, Polish persons in um, uh, like wilder. Uh, how to say it? Uh, range in um, society uh, on, the, on the Western. Western uh, Europe, uh, of course, th there were some some nice, uh, um, famous um, directors, like uh, like um, what? Uh, who was directing them? Um, oh, knife in the water? No. You know what? I've just lost the name. I know I know him very much. The only thing I know I always stands in my mind about this this fella calls uh, I, I, I don't even know if I'm even saying his name right. Kazmierz as Dina that played for Poland, big big um yeah yeah yeah. And the only thing I know about it is yeah and uh, Manchester City, right? 
the transfer fee, they only let him go over and join if they paid for him in photocopies. And that's what they had to do. They had to send loads of photocopies over to Poland. Yeah. Um, and that's how they got the player. There was no cash involved. It was basically photocopies. That's all they sent over there. It was, yeah, bizarre at the time. I remember it on, it must have been front page news in the UK, is Man City just bought a player and they've paid for him in photocopies. <laughs> yeah, a few more comments. Uh, Rob, Rob from Hopsin commented, uh, got to give him props. Calvin Klein Classics is a quality name. It is actually, yeah. That's a bit of a trouble. Um, points of view with Barry Tuck. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That was yeah. that was oh, well it. And then he, he puts I worked on a production of nineteen eighty four where we had John Hurt play Big Brother. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, now I remember it was Roman Polanski, director. Oh, well, Roman Polinski, yeah, he yeah. was the detective, didn't he? Big time, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It's, 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 I'm, I'm enjoying this. This is pretty good. This is. I'm just. It's, it's, a, it's a bit freestyle now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, <she> writes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, all good fun. All good fun. Right, so I think we should we should uh, summarize. Uh, the Wallsteiner is a everyday uh, classic that you can go uh, to this beer, have yeah. a very nice whole evening with this, and you will not be disappointed. No, uh, exactly. yeah, funk and punk. Uh, it's not so obvious. You have to learn a little bit of craft uh, before uh, fully enjoying it. It, it is a good beer. Uh, we all enjoy this beer, uh, but it is complex, uh, and you need to know uh, your stuff. You need to know yeah. other beers. You need to know uh, other styles. Uh, so yes, it's fine beer, but it's one off, right? One beer a night, and you will be satisfied. It's too gassy that you can't drink it too much. It's fine. Uh, you can enjoy it with, with a colleague, for example, uh, to share it. It will be even better. Uh, yes, it's fine beer, but it's not for everyone. Definitely. Mm. No, so, I agree. I agree. Uh, criticizing the beer itself, because it's fine, it's just uh, uh, putting the beer in the supermarket it, it, it is a problem. Because someone can think, oh, okay, it's supermarket beer, I can drink it. It's approachable and easy to drink. No, it's not. No. It's complex. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think you summed it up perfectly. Um, my only thing, and the interesting thing with this, this funk X funk, is why they've chosen to have a how the, the bottle is, is bigger than the cat. From your normal size literally that's quite i don't know what the the, the 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 thoughts were i actually think they've actually done it and the trick is it they call it the overworks yeah they've overworked the bottle made it bigger it's all part of, it's all part of the of the the funk x funk it's all part of the the marketing i think yes yes uh-huh mm. Yeah. I know. I know. Before, visually, visually, you would say it's it's uh, six six hundred sixty millil milliliters uh, bottle. It's it's so big, like a bomber, right? Uh, is it that big? You hold it up against your wall, Steiner. Yeah. It's not. It's not no different in size. No. Different shape, but it's when you go there. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I, 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 before we went live, I was talking to Christoph about the, 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 the bottle design briefly. And it's a bit like, I mean, these, these are of the same ilk as what we've been drinking. And this is from the Yonder Brewing yeah. Somerset Way. And they've got exactly the same with, with, that, with their bottles, an oversized crown 
um, which I stumbled across when I've done about three beers now from these guys, and it was it was the same. The the bar fly had a job to get it off. It just it, it wouldn't sit in there properly. Um, I don't know. Is is that sort of shape bottle for for the style of beer that they're, they're knocking out or something? I don't know. I'm got a clue. Oh, I think the bottle, bottle looks like bottle looks like it, it should be corked, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually yeah. agree with you. I actually agree with you. It's why haven't we got? That yeah, that, that that would that would be that would work, wouldn't it? Yeah, and yeah. I tell you what, that would that would stand it out even more on the supermarket shelves. Yeah, if people would think it's a bit like the wild beer, isn't it? In in, in Waitrose, where they've got the wax on the top of the bottle. They yeah. haven't tried it yet. That champagne one they do, which is seven and a half quid a bottle, which is a half a litre bottle. It's either six sixty or half a litre bottle, but you've got the wax, it all sticks out the side, doesn't it? It looks like, you know, people walk, what the hell is that sort of thing? Yeah. What I actually think is Brewdog could have got more, more wow factor if they put the cork in the top. Yes. Yeah. I think, I think um, it would. I think people. It would look and not dressed it in cock. He's frozen. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so we have problems here on the line. Uh, I, I think we should yeah. uh, now finish here and uh, we can chat later. Um, yeah yeah sure no problem it's been an absolute pleasure yeah um yeah i've got me i've got me beef short ribs to get off the barbecue yeah. now they've been smoking most of the afternoon <laughs> no, I've, I've, again I've, I've i've thoroughly enjoyed tonight guys much yeah. much appreciated you taking part big shout out to the beer hooligan big shout out to uh christoph yeah. over at El dega station I mean, people want to see us again the three of us do it again comment in the box tell us to do it again Give us some suggestions on beer because yeah we want to do supermarket beers which are easy accessible to everyone There's no point in us going down the bottle shop and getting a newfangled um new england ipa that you know you can't get hold of you yeah. know so supermarket beers give us give us the ideas give us what you want and we'll come and do it for you yeah definitely definitely so yeah thanks to all the guys that have left comments We'll see you again, hopefully, on the next live review. Cheers, guys. Yeah, cheers.